Unfortunately, my story starts out from quite the opposite, getting busted. Um, the year was 2005, and I was a sophomore at Ramapo College. It's a small liberal arts school in northern New Jersey. Um, I had made it back to my dorm after a quite stiff night of drinking, and in a drunken stupor in the middle of the night, left my room, went to the opposite stairwell in the dormitory, and started peeing in the steps. And it was very late at night, and there was nobody around except for that one security guard who was patrolling that stairwell at that very particular moment. So, he escorted me back to my room because I didn't have any identification or my key cards. Fast forward six weeks and I get my summons from the judicial office, and my fine for destruction of property is a $50 fine and five hours of community service on the Ramapo College campus. Weak sauce. Uh, so I call the office and I tell them that I want to just knock these five hours out as soon as possible. Um, they told me that if I worked four hours straight, they would cut me a deal and give me that last hour for free. Awesome. So it was said that I was going to come in on a Saturday morning, work 8 to 12, and be done with it. My parents were going to pay the $50 anyway, so what's a little of a work? Um, so I showed up on that particular Saturday morning at 8 o'clock as scheduled at the facilities building, and I was waiting for Bill to come scoop me up, who was the head of the grounds crew department. Bill did pick me up, and he pulled up in a white pickup truck. It had the school logo on the side, it had the snow plow attachment on the front, it had a rake, it had hedge clippers, it looked like we had a big day of grounds work ahead of us. He opened the door open for me, and the first thing he says to me is, I sprained my ankle this morning, and I don't want to do a goddamn fucking thing. <laughs> well, I said, I got no problem with that. <laughs> so I hopped in the cab, and this guy had a cowboy hat on, a denim button-down shirt with the school logo on the lapel, denim wranglers tucked into his leather cowboy boots. Classic. So it's 8 o'clock in the morning, and the first thing we do is go and park the truck behind the baseball dugout, we read the newspaper, we listened to the radio, we talked a little bit, made small talk. He liked to collect autographed signatures on $2 bills because he thought the rarity of the $2 bill increased the worth of the signatures. <laughs> Odd to have the two combined, but it was what he did. So after 9.30, he dropped me off at the cafeteria because I had earned my hour of breakfast break. So, it was partly that, and also partly because he had to go do bank errands off campus. So, from 9.30 to 10.30, I hung out in the cafeteria, and any person that I saw, I flagged him down, and I said, listen to what I'm in the middle of right now. Uh, so, he picks me back up at 10.30. I didn't leave the cafeteria. I did stay there. So, at 10.30, we go, and we're back in his truck, and it's just the two of us bullshitting right now. And we're driving around aimlessly, yet very meticulously around the campus, avoiding any other grounds crew who could identify us or ask us questions as to our whereabouts. Um, so he knew exactly where to go to avoid any sort of suspicion. And at 11 o'clock, he gets a phone call. I don't know who the phone call is from, but it's from a friend of his who used to be a grounds crew worker, old friends of those who are still there at the campus. And he's ready to have lunch with his buddies today. So we drive around and park back at the baseball dugout at about 11.30, and the friend meets up with everybody. There's probably about eight of us, including myself and the other grounds crew keepers, and it's time for lunch. The friend who had called Bill had 12 flank steaks ready to be cooked for lunch. So we went into the baseball equipment shed, plugged in a portable grill, and I had lunch with the entire grounds crew of the Ramapo College campus. We had flank steaks and ketchup, and to make, to make everything better, Bill, the guy who had picked me up, had a toothpick dispenser, similar to a quarter dispenser at an arcade. And I ended up staying for the entire five hours. I hung out with all of the grounds crew members until one o'clock, and then I got back in the truck. Bill drove me to the facilities office, and we signed the paperwork saying that the community service had been completed without doing a lick of it. Thank <laughs> you.